I've been reviewing video games on YouTube for several years now, and I don't have a lot of regrets. I regret not replaying Batman Begins before reviewing it, an issue I plan to correct. I regret building up Watrix as this huge, horrible game when it's basically just a puzzle game with a bitchy random number generator and a steep difficulty curve and half the piece is designed to bone you, and I regret reviewing Ninja Bread Man and going on about its horrible controls when it turns out you can just press Z to jump, which the game never tells you, but over a dozen viewers were delighted to remind me after the fact. Seriously, why was that so heavily requested? If you can jump with a button, that game's just a cheap platformer that's one hour long. Why is that worth discussing? But my biggest regret for this show is not covering Caster in greater detail. In my second Steam Indie special, I was running out of time for a self-imposed deadline, and I barely even mentioned the game. It was a mess. I always wanted to go back and give this pretty sweet game the coverage it deserves. And when I finally went back and finished it, then I really wanted to give it the coverage that it deserves. The story is... there. An organization so generic I just realized we never learn its name is at war with an alien race called the Flanks. For reasons, I assume. To help fight the flanks, this nebulous organization enlists the help of casters, a race of space something or other. At first it's kind of implied that casters are some kind of space wizards, but later you're told they use special suits and the trading cards say they can channel a certain energy that's never mentioned in-game. I'm not even sure if this planet where the game takes place is the home planet of the organization you're working for, or if it's just the latest planet the flanks have infested. You're told later about some group called Endgame, but the dialogue implies Endgame is more of a military supply and research company that made the caster suits, and despite the suits being powered by some kind of technology, you have to track down magic orbs to get most of your weapons, only they might not be magic, but instead some kind of energy that you can absorb. Oh, screw it! You have super strength and super speed, go fight ugly ass aliens! There's your story! Caster is, at its core, a third-person shooter where you can run at super speeds and jump super high. The controls or frame rate are consistently smooth and customizable to your comfort level. The camera controls are more sensitive than Donald Trump's frail, peach-like ego when you start, but you can adjust it to your liking. It's a sad indictment of the games industry that I have to call out the upgrade system as actually being useful. Every level gives you points to improve your running, jumping, health, or any of your weapons, and not only does every single upgrade have a major improvement on your character, but the game's current is finite, and you have to put careful thought into how you spend each upgrade to match your intended playstyle. Fully leveling the jump lets you soar high enough to lose the entire level to a sea of distance fog, and fully leveling the dash makes your energy burn so slowly that you can damn near run non-stop with only brief breaks. It also gives you the ability to run on water. Holy shit, you can run on lava too? And now I'm having a high-speed laser battle while running on lava. This is awesome! My favorite trick is that if you super jump while dashing, you can take off flying across the entire length of the stage. Woo! This kicks so much ass! Sometimes I've even outrun the distance fog doing this. Your starting weapon is the Pulse, a basic projectile that, fully upgraded, fires like a machine gun. Midway through the first chapter, you get the rest of the weapons. The stun completely immobilizes enemies for a few seconds and upgrades into stunning every enemy in sight. Must be wide-angle stun. The Orbit weapon basically puts a shield of bullets around you, and the Seeker weapon fires a bunch of homing projectiles. I said, HOMING PROJECTILES! If any of you feel like actually hitting something, you know, just feel free to do that. Yeah, I never use the Orbiter Seeker, but the last two weapons are totally badass. The Eruptor fires giant grenades that raise the level's elevation, and the Blast fires grenades that lower the terrain. With a few upgrades, both of these weapons let you reshape the entire level with ease. You can use the Eruptor to raise portions of the map above water level, raise platforms out of lava, and for your own amusement, point it straight at the ground rapid fire and make your own personal elevator run out of the ground if you don't feel like jumping up a cliff. See, that's the beauty and genius of the game. Not only do the movement and terrain mechanics make Caster unique from any other shooters that I've played, but the mechanics are just plain fun to use, even if you're just dicking around with them. Experimenting with the dash and jump to go flying and rain giant blurry death balls on the enemies? Fun! Running on water just for the hell of it? Fun! Trying to get rid of all the water like you're trying to royally piss off a Kyogre? Fun! Each mechanic is open and flexible enough that it gives you a sense of freedom to do whatever you want and go about your objectives however you see fit. The first chapter has 15 levels, most of which have a little gimmick that caters to the mechanics. This level, you blast through the floor to drop enemies into lava. This level, the world is dark except for parts where you've shot. This level, the enemies stand on pillars surrounded by acid that you can either jump or use the eruptor to get rid of. And this level has a ton of trees you can grow. Shooting trees gives you health, but the game never tells you that. 
Each level is wide open, allowing you to go bonkers with the movement and terrain mechanics and allowing you to dash and leap over enemies without any obstructions. The levels also encourage exploration since not all of the currency giving shiny balls are marked on your map and you don't get money for replaying a level unless you beat your previous high score. There's a good variety to the enemies and all of them require you to move your ass constantly. Little scarabs that swarm you, plenty of bullet hell enemies, these things that lose their shit when you shoot them and leap into the air raining fire down on you, you have to dash constantly to avoid taking damage and it leads to some furious fast paced addicting gameplay. You're dashing all over the level frantically trading fire with the enemies, hurling eruptors, dashing over the new terrain, then stopping to level out all your new terrain because you've accidentally filled the level with too many obstructions and then going back to dashing full speed strafing and firing at enemies. <laughs> Caster is a game that's only concerned with one thing, being fun. It doesn't get bogged down in story, it doesn't force you to sit through cutscenes, it doesn't tie you down to one gameplay style. It just dumps you in an open map with a simple objective, kill all the enemies or grab all the balls, and it turns you loose. There's no one correct way to play the game, you just do whatever gets the job done. It's the freedom of going into combat any way you want, engaging the enemies by your own whims that makes the game so fun. Yes, the levels are limited, but in these levels and with the tools you're given, you just get the sense that you can do whatever on God's green earth that you please, and everything that you can do is a blast. Oh, speaking of God's green earth, you see a lot of people in the comments sections bitching about the game's graphics. Maybe it's because I grew up with a Nintendo 64 and the game reminds me of drastically cleaned up N64 graphics, but I think the visuals are fine. It's all one cohesive art style and you can easily tell what everything is, so what's the problem? Besides, the forest, bog, and swamp levels with the bright green grass and smooth reflective water, there are times the game looks pretty damn gorgeous. If there's one complaint to be lobbied against Caster, it's the elephant in the room that I'll address at the end. If there's a second complaint to be lobbied against Caster, it's that the game really doesn't know how to handle its difficulty curve. After all, you can run at super speeds, leap out of the game world, and hurl grenades twice your size like it's candy off a of St. Patrick's Day float. How do you really step it up from there? And you can already tell the game's straining to raise the stakes with the first chapter boss. A chapter full of intense, high-speed, frantic battles all leads up to a giant tentacle hentai monster that just kind of ties you up and slowly floats towards you. Weird to see a game built around high-speed action basically having you fight a giant, slowly moving target board as a boss. You just know some sick bastard has gone all Rule 34 on this enemy, and no, I do not want to see it. The second chapter is where the game really tries to ratchet up the difficulty and really starts to suffer for it. This chapter introduces Nega Orbs, and outside of one level where you drop one into acid, it's basically just an excuse for all the enemies to be starker. Now you die in a few hits, there's only like one health pickup tree across the entire chapter, the enemies take a truly obnoxious amount of fire to kill, and the levels are designed to prevent you from using the dash and super jump. This level, the enemies are all on platforms barely larger than they are, and you can't use the eruptor to make new terrain, so this fast-paced third-person shooter now wants you to just run away from every enemy. This level, the enemies are surrounded by walls so large you can't blast them, pretty much giving you no mobility. HOLY SHIT, WHAT THE HELL, YEAY! Jeez, these beetles all dogpiled me and ripped me to shreds, man! This level, all of the enemies are encased in small rooms with walls you can't blast, giving you effectively zero room to maneuver, and this level, the enemies rolling projectiles move faster than you do, and there's a poison cloud to stop you from jumping. I just don't understand why you'd build a game around abusing wicked awesome movement and terrain mechanics and then build several levels in a row that are specifically designed to strip all its mechanics out and just leave behind regular shooting, especially since the shooting is by far the worst aspect of the game. The stun weapon immediately immobilizes an entire group of enemies and doesn't need to recharge. It renders every enemy in the game completely helpless so you can shoot them in the face with no repercussions. This boss that tosses shit tons of fast moving enemies at you that swarm you like ants yeah, it's meant to be a thrilling high-speed battle, but it's so broken on the hard difficulty that I resorted to killing him by stunning him, switching to the blast, landing a hit, and then stunning him again. I ran out of shits to give five curb-stomping defeats a go. Dude never moves, and now I can kill him with ease. Kill him with ease, not with swiftness. Come on. Dude, just die. Die! Oh, and uh, blowing up the floor so the enemy is immersed in lava or acid only affects maybe one enemy in the entire game. What is this thing from Krypton? I don't think the first chapter's boss took this much fire to kill. 
You see my point though, right? The stun works on every enemy and holds entire groups in place while you gun them down. You can make the enemy stronger all you want, they still can't touch me. You're just making the enemies more tedious instead of more difficult. HE'S STILL NOT DEAD! Turns out there's an easier way to kill this deuce. A few of the levels have magic trees you can shoot and it kills all the enemies. So enough firepower to drill to the center of the earth doesn't kill him, but growing a tree does. It just feels like the developer was so focused on trying to make the game harder that the design started to suffer for it, and the game becomes less fun for the sake of becoming more difficult. The first chapter of the game was fairly easy. Who cares? The gameplay is exhilarating! That's all you need! I'm just saying, a realignment of priorities was in order. Though I will give credit for the level in the second chapter where you use the eruptor to build terrain for a transport to cross a river of lava. That's pretty cool and original. See, the game doesn't stop being fun, it just becomes less fun. And then it stops being fun. The seventh level of this chapter, Walls of Earth, is where I rage quit my first run through the game. It's a pretty basic level. Kill four enemies and grab their balls. The problem is these enemies can kill you in one hit. The first time you go to fight one, a cutscene plays to show rain starting to fall, and these cheap shot cheating melon farmers shoot you in the cutscene so you automatically die without getting a chance to defend yourself. Even when I figure out you can skip cutscenes by pressing the escape key and I get out of that death trap, it was still an epic pain in the ass fighting these things because I hadn't figured out the stun lock trick yet, they spew fire like Rambo, and this level is built with tiny ass rooms you can't blast out so you have nowhere to run or maneuver. And I'm starting to wonder why you gave me the super jump if you're gonna kill me every time I try to use it. God, this is so tedious. If there's another tree I'm supposed to shoot, I'm gonna be pissed. But eventually, patience paid off, I beat this level and can finally move on. TO BE CONTINUED?! Are, are you for- TO BE CONTINUED?! No, this isn't sequel bait, the game is incomplete! There's an unfinished level that you can select but doesn't start, the map is red implying this chapter isn't finished yet, and there's a ton of space on the chapter selection menu for chapters that don't exist! It just cuts off! You're told to go to caster.com for more, but the only things on caster.com are a defunct blog and a link to the game store page. This site is completely empty! Where's the damn game?! Do you have any idea how disappointing it was coming back to this game after over a year and being met with to be continued? I ended up doing more research for this game than I have for any other review that I've done. Caster was released in 2009 with nothing but the first chapter up to the Tentacle Hentai boss fight. The second chapter was released in 2010 along with a bunch of new features like the female player character who I named Taya for the benefit of exactly one person in the audience. The only update that's been released since then is a set of optional cartoon graphics which didn't drop until 2015. It's been six years since the partially complete second chapter was added to the game with Jack to show for it, which begs the question, what the hell has the developer been doing this whole time? I know this game was made by one person, I know he has a day job, and I know there's an infinite number of real life issues that can crop up, and any number of things can completely stonewall your progress, but the game was a success! The game's had a huge fan base that's gradually been dying off, are you ever gonna go back and actually finish this? I went digging through the Steam forums and found he's been working on other games, which is understandable, you don't want the guy getting burnt out and putting up crap just to get something put out. Then I found out he's been spending these years porting Caster to the 3DS! Dude abandoned his blatantly unfinished game to start over on an entirely different console, leaving the fan base of the original game high and dry. Allegedly, the 3DS port is actually going to be finished, and then he plans to spend even more time porting the port over to Steam through updates. So it's probably going to be another several years before this damn game is finally finished. The developer did throw us a bone with seven community-created mod missions that you can download and play as a free add-on from the site, and half the missions are really good, but the other half is proof that amateur fan-made content is a poor substitute for the real thing. One level has you fight what is very clearly the author's fanfiction character one-on-one, -on -one, clearly made by someone who didn't figure out that the stun completely breaks one-on-one -on -one combat. I think the best way to explain the letdown is with this metaphor. Imagine you're planning a mission to outer space, and you have enough fuel to reach the moon. If you announce that you're going to the moon, and then you go to the moon, everyone's happy. But if you announce that you're going to Mars, and then you go to the moon, 
Everybody's disappointed because you gave us expectations that you were not able to reach. And capping it off by saying, no, really, we're still going to make it to Mars for years on end without the show for it, is just rubbing extra disappointment into the wound. No matter how good the game is, and Caster is really damn good, the disappointment seriously taints the final product. I would have respected the hell out of this game if it had a fully contained two-hour campaign, or even just the first chapter with a defined beginning, middle, and end with a satisfying conclusion, but the way it just cuts off with a blatant signal the game's not finished is a giant, wait, that's it, moment tainting the game. Caster is definitely worth getting, two bucks for two solid hours of unique and fun gameplay, I've paid a lot more for a lot less. It's just frustrating to see such a good game and original concept deserving of attention completely botch up the landing. Call me when it's done!